It's David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about static CE2301. We're reviewing our exam number four. This is page three, a composite of page threes from the different versions of the test. I've got a C-shaped um, area of these dimensions, 50, 150, and 140 by six and 60. And I've got a y-axis and an x-axis down here and on the on the right side. And I've drawn in the centroidal y prime and the x prime axis. So for my calculations, there's many ways to skin a cat. I'm going to use a big square 200 by 200 with a cutout that's 140 by 100. Those two areas. First thing I'm asked for is. Uh, the centroidal x-bar distance from the y-axis to the centroidal axis y-prime. Instead of just doing a chart, I've just got two areas to, to work with, so I'm just going to do it this way. This is the sum of the x tilde a's, and that's the area is 200 by 200, and its centroidal distance from the right side is 100 minus 100 times 140, minus because it's the cutout area, times 60 plus 70. The 60 is this distance here. 70 is half of the 140 width of it. So that's a centroidal distance of that little piece. And reference from this y-axis. And the areas are 200 by 200 for the big rectangle, big square, minus 100 times 140. So I note that that's, here as I did the math for us, and the area of that thing is 26,000 millimeters squared. Doing that math there, my centroidal distance X bar is 83.8 millimeters. Now I want to know my uh, centroidal moment of inertia about the Y centroidal axis, Y prime. Many ways to skin a cat here too, so I'm going to try to find a little shortcut. And I don't know if this is the shortest way, but it works. I'm going to take, I know moment of inertia is BH cubed over 3 about a rectangle about its base. And so I'm going to, on its side, look at the this Y double prime axis over here on uh, for each element. 200 times 200 cubed over 3 for the big square minus 100 its width times its height uh, reference to the y-axis is 140 cubed divided by 3 do the math that's 441.87 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth now I'm going to use the parallel axis theorem and that states that moment of inertia about a uh, any axis is equal to the uh, moment of inertia about any axis plus or minus the AD squared term. I didn't say that exactly right. The moment of inertia about any axis is equal to the centroidal moment of inertia. And I just rearrange it and I get IXY, the centroidal moment of inertia, is equal to the moment of inertia about this axis over here, y double prime, minus the AD x squared term. That's this number, IY double prime, 441.87, 10 to the sixth, minus the AD squared term. The DX distance is the difference between x bar and 200. So I just subtract that out right here, 200 minus 83.8 makes 116.2 millimeters from this axis, what I've called Y double prime, over to the centroid Y prime axis. And that's sort of a quick way. It was quicker than it took me to describe it. It's 91.1, 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth. Now, part three was the radius of gyration about the centroidal Y prime axis. We call that KY. That's the square root of the moment of inertia, IY prime, divided by the area. That's 91.1, 10 to the 6, divided by 26,000, the area. Take the square root of that, it's 59.2 millimeters. Part 4, 
the centroidal moment of inertia about the x prime axis. Okay, note that the uh, x prime axis is an axis of symmetry. It's going to come into play a little bit later too, but uh, both of those, the big square and the cutout rectangle, are centered on that axis. Their centroid is on that axis. So, parallel axis theorem some of the centroidal moments of inertia plus the 80 squared terms, but the distance y from centroid of the piece to the centroid of the overall shape is zero, so that whole term goes to zero, so I just need my the sum of my centroidal moments of inertia, bh cubed over 12. This is that for the, uh, the big square, this is it minus it for the cutout rectangle, and that's equal to this number, and the total is 121.7, 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th. Part 5, centroidal polar moment of inertia, J0 or JO is equal to the sum of IX prime and IY prime. And so that's just the sum of these two numbers, 121.7 and 91.1, both 10 to the 6th. So that's equal to 212.8 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th. Part 6, the product of inertia with respect to the centroidal axis, that's I, X prime, Y prime, that's equal to zero because the X axis is an axis of symmetry. And if just one of my axes, centroidal axis, is an axis of symmetry, that causes this term, in this case the Y term, to go to zero, which is enough to make the whole